Let's take a look at cash dividends with dividends in arrears for preferred stock for exercise 4B. As you can see in the exercise, Mendez Corporation has 10,000 shares of its $100 par value, 7% cumulative preferred stock outstanding, and 50,000 shares of its common stock outstanding. So the dividend for preferred stock is sort of like with bonds, that there's a stated dividend rate and that's the 7%, 7% of the par value, 7% $100. That means that the dividend that preferred shareholders would receive is $7 per share any time that the, that the dividend is paid. If the dividend is not declared in a particular year, when the shares are cumulative, that means those dividends carry over as an obligation for the company to pay if and when they begin to pay dividends in the future. If the shares are non-cumulative, the dividends for a particular year simply go away, but if they are cumulative, they carry forward. They're not on the balance sheet as a liability. That doesn't become in effect until the company actually declares the dividend, but they are included in the notes to the financial statements as dividends in arrears, dividends that are owed to those preferred stockholders if and when the company begins to pay dividends. So in the first year of the company's operations, 2011, no dividends were declared. I've already entered zeros across the board for 2011. If no dividends are declared, no dividends are paid. However, there are dividends in arrears and that dividends in arrears would be the $100 par value times the 10,000 shares that are outstanding times the stated dividend rate or 7%. So we know it's $7 per share times the 10,000 shares. That means that in a year where enough dividends are declared, $70,000 goes to the preferred stockholders first. Now, since dividends weren't paid in 2011, those dividends carry over to 2012 as dividends and arrears. As I've already said, they appear in the notes to the financial statements. In 2012, when $120,000 worth of dividends are paid, the first $70,000 goes to the stockholders to pay for last year's dividends that carried over. Since $120,000 were declared and $70,000 were paid for last year, that means the next 50,000 goes to pay the dividends for the current year. And that means that $20,000 will carry over as dividends in arrears to 2013. Now, as you can see, the full 120,000 that was allocated or declared for 2012 covers the dividends and arrears, plus most of the dividends for the current year. And so how much is left for the uh, common stockholders? Nothing. So as of yet, no common stock dividends have been paid. Now in 2013, the company again declares dividends and they declare, as you can see, $140,000 in dividends. The first 20,000 of that will cover their dividends and arrears. So for the first time they're caught up, then they will pay the $70,000, excuse me, the $70,000 that they owe for dividends for the current year. And the preferred stockholders are completely paid off. They have no dividends in arrears and of the 140,000 that was declared, 90,000 of that went to the preferred stockholders. And so what did, that, what did that leave for the common stockholders? For the first time, they're going to get a dividend. And I don't know how to use Excel. The first time they're going to get a dividend and they will get $50,000 total. And I've already put in how to find the per share dividend that you divide by the number of shares outstanding. And you can go ahead and do 2014 on your own. There are no dividends in arrears, so they will pay the full dividend for 2014 to their preferred stockholders and anything left goes to the common stockholders.